Experiment 8, May the 3rd. I'm revisiting Experiment 4. I've decided instead of using a ceramic cup to hold the magnetite, unlike Experiment 4, I've decided to use a steel one. I've confirmed this is steel by using a magnet. With regards to Experiment 4, what seemed to happen is that the zone closest to the magnetron got super hot, and I don't know if you can see this, but the magnetite has firmly fused with the uh, ceramic. I believe that porcelain is not a suitable container for my experiments. I've cut the can quite low because I believe that even though the microwaves cannot penetrate straight through the steel can, they can however bounce off and then come back in. Also note that I have it off centre. When I'm going to be doing the experiment, I'm also going to have the system a bit off centre also. I'm going to have it maybe there. Okay. And this is so that the microwaves, because Lexi believes that in the dead centre is the weakest point of heating. So I will have it slightly off centre and quite close to the magnetron. I'll be, again, redoing inner walls only. <coughs> and again, unlike experiment four, I will be using perlite as an intermittent insulator. Oops. Also note that I'm going back to a technique that I applied during experiment one, but have neglected for the previous six experiments, which is to masking tape up, masking tape up the air vents. I believe this is a crucial step because if you apply insulation, if you apply air conduct convection, it cools the experiment. <coughs> I believe this is safe based on experiment one's results. As nothing happened. The reasons why I didn't choose to use it was because I couldn't get rid of any moist vapours, but I believe now I can simply uh, do two minutes, take it out, release any residual vapours and put it back in again. Like so. Okay, experiment eight about to commence. Thousand watts, fifteen minutes. Here goes. Microwave active. And once again, I'll be monitoring it from upstairs. If there's a loud bang, I'll be killing the power and firing a fire extinguisher. But God forbid, that won't be happening. See you in 15 minutes. Okay, here are the results after 15 minutes. Smoking already, working, a bit longer. Oh, what? I just saw it uh, switch itself off. Let me just uh, see that timer properly. 20 something minutes, micro power, 1000 watts, jet start, should be okay now. Here it is after 15 minutes plus 20 minutes, 35 minutes total cooking time. Here are the results. Fucking roasting. Fucking roasting my friend. But not molten. 
bit longer. We might get there yet. I'm calling it a time a bit early because I feel like it. I feel pretty toasty in that. There we go. And this is what it looks like after 50 odd minutes. And I haven't even got any paper to test it on. Because I don't. But has it melted? No. Put it back in for a bit longer. Okay, after an hour and a bit worth of cooking, these are the results. Up she comes. Ah, there we go. And here are the results. Okay, shall we try and pour it? One thing I can definitely test for though is I can, I've got some paper with me now. And does it burn? So here we go. Here's a bit of paper. And the answer is... It singes. And the lower down I go... We'll have a look at that. It's definitely singed, but it's not burned. So it's not been as successful as the uh, previous experiments. Also, I see no evidence of anything molten, but we will take the, uh, the crucible out anyway and see what the results are and pour them into there. I really shouldn't be doing this left-handed. I'm gonna do this right-handed, I think. Okay. So here we go. I got. Here are the results. And only the magnetite comes out, and it seems to have been very firmly stuck in there. All I can say is this has been a complete fiasco yet again. Thank you very much for watching. Is it a good idea to microwave this? And I would say this is probably a bad idea.